We had so much fun a few months ago with our winter blues series, if you guys remember. But since we covered the blues, of course, here in Colorado, we have to move to orange, blue and orange. Go Broncos, right? Okay, well that's right. Our new Rhymes with Orange series kicks off today with a behind the scenes look at the famous Rocky Ford melons. Here's my conversation with Michelle Hiracotta, uh, the Michael Hiracotta rather, the president of Rocky Ford Growers Association. Michael, it's really not a Colorado summer without some Rocky Ford melons. So we're so excited to have you here today. First, tell us what's going on behind you right now. Uh, behind me right now is uh, we're cultivating this field. Uh, it's a field of cantaloupes. And uh, uh, last week we got quite a bit of rain, so it sealed the dirt. So what we want to do is break up the dirt. So if there, there's a pretty good wind that comes through, it won't uh, blow and damage the little plants that are sprouting through, through the ground right now. Yes, we would hate for that to happen. We're all so much looking forward to having a melon this summer. And a lot of people, I would say, complain this time of year that it's pretty chilly at night, but then it's really hot in the middle of the day. But this actually could be good for the crops, right? Well, you know, the heat is very good for the crop. Uh, the cool, we can, you know, it, it's part of Colorado, so it, it makes the plants tougher. And, uh, you know, we don't mind the heat, we don't mind the cool, but uh, we just, we can't stand the wind. <laughs> the wind, yes, that's the one we want to avoid. Do yes, these conditions um, help make the melons sweeter by chance? Yeah, and this, when this, um, the fruit starts uh, setting its uh, sugars, uh, the difference in the, the daytime heat and the nighttime heat really um, force the fruit to pull up sugar. And that's what gives uh, Rocky Ford cantaloupes uh, uh, part of their flavor is the difference in the heat between the day and the night. Yeah, so many of us look forward to having that sweet taste in the summer. Let's talk about the growing season. How long is it for us here in Colorado? Oh, I'd say end of April, um, 1st of May till uh, sometimes, you know, mid-September, late September till to mid-October, uh, late October. Just just depends on that first freeze. And it's, wow. it's uh, you know, it is Colorado, so it's very hard to, to predict what's going to happen. It can be, you can get a freeze in late September and then it turned back to 80 degrees and not freeze again until November. So it's, it's very unpredictable. Right, definitely. But like you said, this all plays into those sweeter melons, which is so great. What's next yeah. after everything gets planted? Can you walk us through the next steps? Um, the next step will be um, growing. We'll, we'll set, uh, you know, irrigation and make sure everything's uh, wet, but not too wet. And we'll, you know, we'll make sure there's not any weeds in the field and um, you know, just get them to grow and take, take really good care of them so they, they make it to harvest. When should we expect uh, the ones behind you to hit store shelves? And you know, when can we expect cantaloupe season to be in full swing at our local grocery store? Uh, th this field here, if it's, if it's good weather, I would say towards the uh, 20th of July, wow. if everything stays, uh, stays like it is, maybe a little earlier, but if we do get some more weather, it'll be a little later. Okay. Michael, tell me about how you got into farming. Is this something that's uh, kind of like a family legacy for you? Or is this something that you kind of fell into? How does this work? Yeah, my dad was a farmer. His dad was a farmer. My uncle's farm. So I kind of, I uh, followed in the footsteps. I, uh, you know, wish they were doctors or something. So I could have <laughs> done something different. <laughs> it's pretty hard some days, but no, I love it. I'm, my son is actually on the tractor and, uh, I farm with my cousins and you know, it's, it's, uh, it makes for a pretty good, uh, pretty good days, most days. Yeah, I'm sure most people too, when they hear that you're a farmer, if they talk to you or meet you in the store or something, they're like, wait a second, you're one of the ones that's, that's involved in the honeydews and cantaloupes that we see every year. What have you, do you take pride in, in the Rocky Ford melons that you bring to these Colorado residents every year? Yes, I do. It's uh, you know, it's it's what we do. It's in our blood, and uh, you know, it's it, our whole uh, whole year revolves around planting and harvest. So you know, uh, eight months or or it takes four months to to get it to harvest and to finish harvest, and uh, the other eight months we're planning and uh, getting ready for that time. So take great great amount of pride in that. Amazing. Well, we take pride in the melons that you guys grow, too, because so many people that talk about it are like, oh, Rocky Ford, that's that's where you're supposed to get your melons. So we thank you, exactly. Michael, and your thank whole you. family. And we can't wait to slice into a Rocky Mountain melon this summer. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you.
there's nothing like an incredible Rocky Ford melon. Well, for more melon facts and info, you can check out the Rocky Ford Growers Association on Facebook.